of a distraction like I don't find myself going down a rabbit hole and then finding myself 45 minutes later having just wasted so much time and I do say wasted because sometimes I feel like I'm getting inspired and I'm actually doing market research or I'm actually learning something and other times I feel like it's just a distraction and an escape and then I feel like honestly I've just fallen into a trap for people who think they're doing something with their time they're actually doing jack shit with their time I have stumbled upon what I think is gonna be by far and away one of my most valuable and important pieces of the pie. And that is like- Hello darling, I'm Lisa Pyre. Welcome back to my channel. This channel is all about love, light, spirituality, lifting you up and leaving you better than I found you every single time. Positive, good vibes only. I have been a little quiet on YouTube lately because I've been so consumed with a few projects that have been taking my time and energy, but so excited about them. And I'm gonna tweak a little bit the kind of content that I put out here in YouTube, still very much in the same vibe, just readjust my priorities a little bit. So you will be hearing a lot more from me very soon. And I'm so grateful to the subscribers, old and new, who are supporting me here on this journey. I hope everyone is doing well. We are in Sagittarius season now. I love this vibe. I feel like eclipse season was hard on a lot of us. It was just a lot of upheaval and edgy energy. There was crazy news flow and a lot of debacle, <laughs> scandal. So it was sort of entertaining, but also a little tumultuous. I hope that you're feeling the vibe of Sagittarius season, which is juicy and a lot smoother, more vibrant, more upbeat, super expansive. This is kind of explorer vibe, visionary vibe. And I hope that it's treating you really well so far. I love this for going into the holiday season as well as the end of the year and into 2023 because we can really be thinking expansively about who we wanna be and what we wanna create. You are co-creating with the universe, your future and your destiny in every moment with your thoughts, words, actions, emotions. You are the owner, CEO, founder of your own life and destiny and you can be whoever you want to be. I wanted to share a little bit of my experience so far this year. It's been a huge year for me. I've been super quiet. I do tend to be quite private about a lot of parts of my life, including my moves. Uh, I, I think that it's healthy to keep a little bit of low profile sometimes and not announce everything to the world 24 seven. But I also feel compelled to share some of the highlights and the ups and downs and some of what's worked and hasn't worked about my journey so far this year because it might be helpful to you or inspiring to you to have that insight and maybe there's something you're working on or dreaming of and if I can empower you to go for what it is that you think your true north is and your dreams and passion are then I would love to play that role for you so or maybe it's just curiosity and interest, right? It's always interesting to see people building something new from scratch and to hear the raw, honest truth about how it's going and what's worked and what hasn't worked. Maybe exactly what you need to hear right now as you move forward, whatever is in your highest and best interest. I always think that there are no coincidences and the universe is constantly trying to send us messages and communicate with us in many different ways. The more open and available we are to it, then the better coaching we get, the better guidance we get, and the better help and support we get. You know, the more coachable you are, the more universe wants to get in there and help you with whatever it is that you're working on and keep you in alignment and help you learn the lessons that you need to learn in order to level up and get what you want to manifest in all of your blessings. So far this year has been huge because I really changed archetype and I reinvented myself. It is crazy when I look back at the very beginning of the year and even though I really knew in my gut and my heart that I was aligned and that this was the right move for me. I had no idea what the future was gonna hold or how this year was gonna go. I had no idea exactly what I was gonna do. I didn't know how I was gonna end up getting paid. There were really a lot of unknowns. It felt very uncertain, exciting, and scary at the same time. I think at first I was a little reticent. I just held back a lot. I did a lot of soul searching. I did a lot of meditation. I had a lot of quiet and downtime and just really reflecting on what it was that I thought that I wanted to do. And then at a certain point, I felt like I was getting a nudge, push, kick from the universe to get going, get going. And all that kept coming out in the oracle cards, which I love to use for guidance, it's just a form of divination, which means tapping into the ancient wisdom of the universe, which is for me far richer and more sophisticated than just what's available here in the 3D or in our 
monkey ego mind. Humanity has been around for 200,000 years, so there's so much more wisdom available to us if we tap into our higher consciousness and tap into the universe, to that universal wisdom than is available right here or on the internet, or as I said, in our ego mind. So anyway, I love to tap in. And what was happening for me was I kept getting cards that said chop wood, show the world your true self. I was like, okay, but what does that mean? And it just meant take a step, a step. And that was scary because it felt random, it felt insignificant, it felt kind of awkward. But I knew that I needed to establish my voice, just put myself out there in some form, shape or way show people what I was all about, given that I had had a very different career before I came to this point where I realized that my true purpose in this lifetime was to be a light worker and healer, to raise the vibe, to bring love and light, to inspire and empower people to see their own magic and light. But there are many different ways that I could have executed upon that purpose and that was the part that was the unknown. I decided that I, I did need to just put my voice out there because that would, first of all, track things. What? I, don't, I didn't know. But I knew that it would establish a persona amongst my network and amongst others in the public and in the community of this different path that I was taking. And it takes time for people to get used to you doing something new and it takes time for them to start to trust you and to gain credibility in that new role, right? You need to seem as though it's a fit, that you're committed, that you're consistent, that you're gonna stick with it. It is just important to be consistent over time. That's really what I learned. And some people are gonna jump on board and be super supportive from day one. And then there are quite a lot of people who aren't gonna support you until it's popular to support you. And both are fine, right? All is welcome and all is, appreciated with so much graciousness and gratitude. I did need to start somewhere, so I just started a Substack, which is like an independent journalist publication, a blog, newsletter, and that allowed me to stay creative, stay in the flow, get disciplined, be accountable, and just create content. And I didn't know where that was gonna go, but I knew that it was important to get in that flow and that routine. And I loved that it was forcing me to be vulnerable and get naked and find my authentic, true voice. So Substack is amazing because it has created that discipline and that flow. It hasn't been a huge source of growth and I don't necessarily think it's gonna pay me anytime soon. However, it has been fantastic for visibility, awareness. It has brought some really interesting opportunities, referrals, intros that are gonna be very lucrative and abundant for me. And then it has also created the opportunity for me to to cut down bite-sized pieces into posts for Instagram. And I've also done that with my YouTube content and the Substack sound bites or excerpts have been by far and away some of my best performing content on Instagram. So even though it hasn't necessarily taken on such a life on Substack itself, because I have learned that people don't really like to change platforms if they're not already there to begin with, but it has created fantastic content that has been a great source of capturing new followers on Instagram. Really, it's a virtuous circle or cycle. Everything that I have been doing has been feeding something else if it's not standing on its own two feet as well as others. And then I added Instagram. That's been awesome too because that was, again, accountability. The minute that I had followers, I wanted to honor those followers with the content that they expect and are hoping for. And I feel that it is an honor to be invited into anybody's feed and I don't wanna take that for granted. So I started really fostering a community of vibration and a place and a space on Instagram that felt good for me and that I felt was what people wanted from me. But that was also a little trial and error and testing just to see exactly what people wanted. And then I've continued to innovate there over time in part because I just love to innovate and be creative. I always have different ideas of how I wanna do things. And it's been really fun to see what people respond to. So being willing to be authentic but keeping an open mind about exactly how people want the content or they want the product or whatever it is delivered, I think has worked really well for me. And that's just a trial and error process, finding that sweet spot. And then YouTube has also not been a huge growth engine, as you can obviously see, I don't have a lot of followers, but, or subscribers, but it's been 
amazing for acquiring a new skill set. It's been so fun creating the content. It's been a huge learning curve. It has been getting me way outside my comfort zone, getting comfortable in front of the camera. And it's just been a new skill set in a new area that I think is really valuable. I also love the idea of bringing my vibration and bringing what I have to say and how I want to express myself to people in different formats. So I like the idea of having written content, of having my voice out there, audio with my podcast uh, recordings, and then now also video. The combination of all of them is really good and then you just double down or really hone in on whatever are clearly your sweet spot and what they want from you and how they want it. That has been really beautiful to see how those platforms have worked together. I have been just following my intuition in terms of where I want to be and how the different platforms that I'm on. There are some social media platforms that I personally just prefer over others. I find them to be more high vibration, less of a distraction. Like I don't find myself going down a rabbit hole and then finding myself 45 minutes later having just wasted so much time. And I do say wasted because sometimes I feel like I'm getting inspired and I'm actually doing market research or I'm actually learning something. And other times I feel like it's just a distraction and an escape. And then I feel like honestly, I've just fallen into a trap for people who think they're doing something with their time, they're actually doing jack shit with their time. So that is, I think a little bit of what a lot of us fall prey to with social media. I do think that it is a trap and it is a huge distraction for a lot of people. And if you do find yourself down those rabbit holes, not doing anything terribly productive or inspiring or that's really taking you somewhere. I mean, it's fine to feel like I know that I'm just distracting myself and getting entertained for a little while. That's fine. Same as Netflix, right? But finding yourself there for too long, for too many hours of the day where you're not actually if you're honest with yourself, really creating anything or contributing anything, then you need to realize that somebody else is getting ahead of you in that time. And you are falling behind of someone, someone you are, and falling behind on manifesting the life and the destiny that you really want and deserve. So you just have to think about that. There's definitely a trade off. That's my little side note segue on social media. But the point is on some of the platforms, I have not focused my time because I just didn't feel like it. And that has just a, been a personal decision. Maybe it's not as great for business, but I have personally gone with the platforms that I prefer that I think are the highest vibe and where I feel like my followers or target market really are. And so that that's just what I'm doing. I have chosen to kind of stay away a little bit from TikTok. I know that it's all the rage and it's very hot right now. I'm really lukewarm on it, if I'm really honest. I find it to be mixed in terms of vibration and a huge, huge, huge time suck. And I'm not really convinced on the long-term value and marketability for me. For me and creating the value that I wanna create with my platform, I think it's not right, but I think it is absolutely brilliant for the right person or for influencers for the right brand. So I get it, love it. So far, it hasn't been a big focus for me. And let's see, what else? I have stumbled upon what I think is gonna be by far and away one of my most valuable and important pieces of the pie. And that is life purpose coaching, performance consulting, and eventually speaking engagements, which I've also started. So life purpose coaching was a little bit of a stumble, something that I always was into and interested in, but what happened was I started to get really into human design, and I also love the idea of looking into people's birth charts and life path numbers, and I started to just synthesize the whole thing and create a custom, reports, summarizing all the top findings and really getting into the energy of people and then giving them what I felt intuitively they would benefit from hearing. So pulling some of the details from all those things and then pulling it all together. And I have been getting rave reviews from that, just from the friends and family that I've been testing it out on and honing the craft on. And it has led to, in two weeks of offering that pro bono just for friends and family, to get my feet wet and to test it out, I started to get paid offers, opportunities, speaking engagements, referrals. It just has taken on a little bit of a life of its own. So I can very clearly see that that's one of the things the market wants for me. And that is such a blessing because I love, love, love to do that. Absolutely love it. I and mean, I would do it 
for free if I could. It does take a lot of time and I do put my heart and soul into it. If you are interested, by the way, you can check the description box. I'm gonna put a link there that will lead you to a place where you can reach out to me and inquire about a life purpose coaching session for yourself. That would be an honor for me to show you the magic of you and how you can embody your unique design and contribute what you are here for in this lifetime. Love, love, love human design and I think it's so fascinating and powerful to really understand the depth and richness of our gifts way beyond strengths and weaknesses and what we get in a performance review. It's really so much more sophisticated and so much more unique to you. And you get to see not only what the conscious traits are, but also what the subconscious traits are. And so that means by default that those are things that answering a survey would never bring out. That information will never come from something that you have on the top of your head, right? So there's so much that you can tell from human design and some think that there's gonna be a day when people ask what your human design is instead of what your sign is. And I don't necessarily disagree. So I have been focusing on that and that's part of the reason why I haven't been creating too much content for YouTube lately, but I'm gonna be getting back to it. I'm gonna be pivoting a little in terms of the type of content that I wanna bring you. But I did wanna give you just a little update in terms of how things have been going this year. I have been careful about investments in equipment, resources, things that I wasn't sure that I necessarily needed before I saw what the market was gonna want from me. That was a very smart decision. I think it's good not to be too risk averse in terms of really putting your money where your mouth is, but I do feel like there are so many people who are preying on founders and entrepreneurs and young people who are looking to do things in the world with these different types of coaching schemes and courses and paid whatever, all these opportunities f to invest your money in order to bet on your future. But I think it's so much better to start to try to create value, portable value, because that is what m will attract money. Money is an energy. So the minute that you start to create value, the universe will want to reward that with abundance, with money. And so I think that that will happen naturally once you start to create the value. But before you really know where the value is gonna be, how the universe is gonna wanna respond, what it's gonna consider valuable, I think that it doesn't make sense to make huge investments that are just based on assumption before you really have an indication from the market about what the market's gonna want from you and how it's gonna want whatever you have to deliver, deliver. So that would be my two cents on how to invest time and resource. I've just followed an intuitive process personally, but I, there are very few things that I've spent money on or ways I've spent money or amounts of money that I've spent in this journey so far that I regret. Very happy with especially the things that I chose not to spend money on or not to do just yet. And that was great because actually the way that things are sort of playing out and panning out is not exactly what I expected. There are some things that I could have spent money on up front that just wouldn't have been worth it. So many things these days are so automated or quick. So you can really do things the minute that you see that there's market demand or there's the opportunity there, right? You can just make it happen. I love that idea of just in time kind of manufacturing um, because you know that you're spending the time and the resource according to something that's going to truly return on your investment, right? Okay, so that is what I have to share about how this year has gone so far. It has been amazing. It's been scary. It has been uncertain, but I definitely have a vision for where the roads go from here. I have no idea exactly how fast certain things are gonna go or what's gonna show up tomorrow, but I can very clearly see now that this new path is gonna more than be abundant for me and fulfilling for me and one of the best decisions I've made in my life. And I just couldn't be more excited and energized about this career path and the fact that I found a place that I can commit to for the rest of my professional life. I just had to change the battery and the light changed, so that's why the light looks a little different. The sun is setting here because we're in the middle of winter in the mountains, but I just wanted to thank you for being here. I hope this was interesting. I am happy to answer any questions about my journey so far in this radical change and transformation, changing archetype and reinventing myself this year in less than a year. It has just been the most rewarding, exciting, scary, crazy experience. 
and I hope that it inspires you and that it shows you that you can absolutely follow and chase your dreams, that just stay focused and you have to drown out all of the noise and the distraction and just really go within and trust yourself and find that conviction and then go for it and just follow the signs and follow your intuition. Not everyone's necessarily gonna have your best interest at heart or be rooting for you, but it really doesn't matter. You can root for you and you can find a small core group of supporters that are gonna cheer loudly. Pull them in close and stay good to them and they'll stay good to you. And then just go for it. You have something very unique and beautiful to contribute. If you're brainstorming a new idea and if I can do anything to support you, reach out in the comments. Also look at that link in the description Box if you want to reach out to me for life purpose coaching it would be an honor and pleasure and thank you again for watching if you enjoyed this don't forget to like and subscribe and i look forward to seeing you in my next one in the meantime be well and i send you lots of love luck and blessings